In this video, we're going to discuss how to identify rigid motions. Rigid motions are transformations that preserve distance and angle measure. Another way to think about that is rigid motions are transformations that preserve size and shape. So three main examples of rigid motions include translations, reflections, and rotations. A non-example of a rigid motion, so a transformation that does not preserve distance and angle measure, is a dilation. Now a dilation does happen to preserve angle measure, but it does not preserve size or distance. Uh, since most dilations are going to either expand a shape or shrink a shape. Okay. When we identify rigid motions in this lesson, it's helpful to know our shortcut rules. So reflections, four main reflection rules. Uh, reflect over the x-axis, you negate the y-value. Y-axis negates the x-value. Reflecting over y equals x, you switch the coordinates. And reflecting over y equals negative x, you switch and negate the coordinates. And three main rotations, we're going to assume these are counterclockwise about the origin. Rotation of 90 degrees, negate y, then switch the coordinates. Rotation of 180 is negate the coordinates. And rotation 270 is negate x, and then switch the coordinates. So first, let's start off very simple. If we take a look at example one, it says what rigid motion is shown in each picture. Number one, A, is showing a rotation. We can see that the arrow has been turned. B shows a reflection because we can see that the arrow has been flipped. And C shows a translation because the arrow has been slid or shifted over. So each of these, remember, are rigid motions, meaning the pre-image and the image are congruent. They preserve distance and angle measure. All right, let's take a look at some examples using coordinates. Number two says to use the shortcut rules to determine what rigid motion occurs. So let's compare the coordinates from the pre-image to the image. I notice that the x coordinates are staying the same in each example. Negative 3, 1, for instance, becomes negative 3, negative 1. The y coordinate, however, has been negated. So x has stayed the same, y has been negated. So that's like x, y becoming x, negative y. And notice on that last example for c, we just can't negate 0, which is why that looks like the same coordinate. So we have to think about, well, what reflection, rotation has um, this rule, x, y becomes x, negative y. So when we negate the y value, that's going to be a reflection over the x-axis. All right, in number three, we're going to do the same thing. P is negative 8, 9, and it becomes negative 9, negative 8. Q, negative 6, 4, becomes negative 4, negative 6. And R12 becomes negative 2, 1. So I notice that the point x, y, the coordinates are flipping, but also the y value has been negated. So it's negative y, comma, x. So again, think about your shortcut rules for reflections and rotations. What rule does this represent when you take the y value, negate it, and then flip the coordinates? This is a rotation of 90 degrees. We're going to assume counterclockwise here since that's a positive rotation and about the origin. Another option that you could have as an answer would be to take rotation of 270 clockwise or negative 270 about the origin. Both of those answers would work since those are equivalent rotations. In our next example, instead of looking at a table comparing the coordinates, we're going to look at a pre-image and image that are already plotted on the coordinate plane. In number four, we're asked to find a rigid motion that maps PQRS onto P prime, Q prime, R prime, S prime. So we wanna think about, does it look like it's been slid? That would indicate a translation. 
Does it look like it's been flipped? That would mean reflection. Or does it look like it's been turned? That would indicate rotation. So in this case, it looks like we have translated or slid the shape. Okay, it almost looks like it's been like copied and pasted elsewhere on the coordinate plane. So now we just have to figure out, well, what is that translation? So we're going to pick two corresponding points. So let's say I pick Q and Q prime. And we're just going to count the boxes and figure out how it moved. So I can see that it moved 10 boxes to the right and that it moved six boxes down. So this is a translation of 10, negative six. In number five, it does not look like it was slid or shifted, but instead it looks like it's been flipped. That would mean that number five is a reflection. We just have to now come up with what the line of reflection is. In this case, it's going to be the x-axis, which is the same thing as y equals zero. Either of those would be um, correct in this example. So here's our line of reflection. And I can tell that because every point from the pre-image, let's say K, and every corresponding point in the image are an equal distance from that line of reflection. Number six, identify a rigid motion that maps J, K, L, M onto J prime, K prime, L prime, M prime. Well, this is definitely a rotation because I can see that it has turned on its side. Now I just have to figure out what the rotation is. So for this, I notice, let's say I pick um, K to start. I notice that K has moved one quadrant this way. That's going to tell me that I have a 90 degree rotation. That's a one quadrant movement, meaning a one turn of our paper. So rotation of 90 degrees. And we're going to say that that's about the origin. Now, every positive rotation is always equivalent to a negative rotation or a clockwise rotation. So the other correct answer in this problem would be negative 270 about the origin. If you have trouble identifying rotations from a picture, you could always compare the coordinates and see which shortcut rule they follow. And for our last example, it's a little different because it says identify a series of rigid motions. And if we look at it, we're mapping TRAP onto T double prime, R double prime, and so on. So that tells us two transformations have happened. When we see a problem like this, there's often multiple correct answers. So we're going to start out with one possible answer here, and we'll talk about some other possibilities as well. So I notice that the orientation of the letters has flipped. So T, for instance, was on the left of this trapezoid, whereas it's on the right of this trapezoid. So that tells me some sort of reflection has come into play. And there's different reflections you could choose from. Let's say I reflect over the line X equals one. So here's the line X equals one. And what I would suggest is when you are doing this and you take your first guess is to plot it. It makes it a lot easier to figure out what the next coordinates are going to be. I'm just going to slide my point P over. All right. So here is our first image. And now I want to see, I'm going to neaten this up a little bit. Uh, now I want to see, can I get this trapezoid to map onto the final trapezoid, the one with the double prime? So I can see now it looks like it's been slid over. So um, I'm going to say this looks like a translation and it looks like I'm moving two boxes to the right and three up. So to figure that out, pick any two corresponding points. Let's say I pick P and P, uh, P prime and P double prime, and we're just going to count the boxes there. So I mentioned before, there's multiple correct answers. So that's one option. Let's say that I went back to the very beginning and I erased everything here. And let's say I wanted to reflect over the y-axis. That could have been correct as well. So A prime would have been here. P prime. 
T prime and I would have had my first image right here. And then that just means my translation would be a little bit different now. I would be going four boxes to the right and three up. So there's multiple correct answers. We could have come up with different vertical lines to reflect over. We could have done a translation first and then a reflection. So on a problem like this, it's always best to just plot what you think the first image should be and then try and move from there from the first image to the final image. Hopefully this video helps you understand how to identify rigid motions.